stands one inch taller, both on point at weigh-ins. Mahalik will have a one inch reach advantage in this bout. For our official introductions, here's Joe Martinez. And all five fans, we are set for our next atomweight quarterfinal. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. She's a grappler standing five feet, three inches tall. Weighing in officially 106 pounds, her professional record stands at two victories with one defeat. Finding out of Richmond, Kentucky, here is Linda F109 Mahala! And across the cage, her opponent fighting out of the red corner. Her background is in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. At five feet, two inches tall, she weighed in 105 and one half pounds in seven professional fights. Her record, four victories with three defeats. Fighting out of Queens, New York, here is Jillian Lionheart de Corsi. And your referee once again in charge of the action is Marcio La Selva. Our quarterfinals continue here inside Memorial Hall. It is Linda Mahalik getting this rematch with veteran Jillian DeCourcy. TJ DeSantis, Megan Anderson, Julie Kedzie live here tonight on Access TV for the Phoenix Tournament. Our clock powered by Juju Me Fight Premature Aging with Juju Me's high grade Juju Bees, the ultimate unknown superfood. Use code Invicta FC for 10% off. DeCourcy in the red, firing that right hand there, finding a home. Mahalik trying to uh, utilize that jab early. Definitely no filling out between both these ladies. They're both hitting hard shots early on, which I'd love to see. There is no time to lose in these five minute rounds and they're both trying to capitalize super early. It's really a sprint. When you look at a, a mixed martial arts fight that goes 15 minutes, so, you know, uh, five minutes can go by in the blink of an eye, it feels. It really can, or it can feel like forever. <laughs> um, you know, something I like the way uh, both are approaching this is Mahalik is really punching forward. She's really setting into that front leg with her punch. Of course, he read that earlier and threw an inside leg kick, and Mahalik responded with her own inside leg kick um, when she saw that De Corsi has a similar sort of style in moving forward. Mahalik is doing a really good job when she enters with her jab. She's dropping her head right off the center line, so she's not being countered with that, with that right hand or that jab. So she's very smart with the way that she's entering the pocket right now. We'd like to see a little bit more offensive footwork there from DeCourcy. You know, Mahalik is very, when, when she enters in the pocket, she's very heavy on that lead leg. I would love to see DeCourcy maybe, maybe look at beating up that leg with the low kick. She might be able to disrupt the stance a little bit, kind of get something of her own in the works from countering on that jab. I agree. You're looking at this striking affair. Both of these ladies, you know, have their uh, own approach and, and significantly different. We see Mahalik mixing uh, the kicks, but she's been really jab heavy. And, you know, looking at uh, DeCourcy, she's uh, a much more volume type of striker. She is, you know, and DeCourcy, DeCourcy likes movement. She likes wrestling, got that takedown she was looking for. Um, and now we can see her on the ground. This is where she wanted to be. This is where she likes to work. She likes to wrestle, she likes to grapple, but Mahalik is no slouch on the ground. No, and just like that, she's able to get back to nice. her feet. Which that's, that's huge, huge in a five minute fight. You know, you have to think, do they score that takedown? Right. She, she bounced right back up, like how do you score that? That's a really, you know, important moment right there for Mahalik. Also interesting for Mahalik too, who disengaged on the feet, wanted to get this fight back at space, didn't really want to mess around in the clinch with DeCourcy. Well, I think she, she knows from their previous fight, DeCourcy's strengths, and she knows her own strengths. So why play into DeCourcy's kind of field of expertise when she doesn't have to and she you know she's doing a really good job of using her range a little bit DeCourcy I think hasn't figured out the timing and range of Mahalik yet and I think that's the benefit of a three round fight she doesn't have three rounds right. she's only got one and that's really what a tournament's all about it's all about that adjustment and uh, you don't get to make adjustments you know after the round here in our quarterfinals and, and semifinals you got to do it on the fly that was a nice interruption shot from um, from DeCourcy to Mahalik. It really kind of stopped her for a second, made her reassess, readjust. But um, yeah, DeCourcy, I, she is a volume striker. I think she needs to pick up the volume even more right here. Mahalik is not necessarily landing more, but she's landing hard when she lands TJ. And that, that's got to count, you know, for something. 
I would love to see Dekorsi kind of double double up on that jab as she enters the pocket and then Ooh, nice. maybe switch up her levels and go to the body a little bit. She's struggling to close that range because Mahalik is doing a really good job of establishing with that hard jab and she's kind of stopping her in her tracks. So I would like to see Dekorsi kind of push push the action a little bit more, increase that volume and not let Mahalik you know, control Ooh. the range. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think range is what's going on here, especially for Mahalik. And I have to say, she is landing pretty darn hard. Of course, his face is pretty red right now. And the legs are getting quite a beating. About 45 seconds left here in the only round of this quarter final fight and uh, you can see that momentum really building here for Linda Mahalik down the stretch. Really is beautiful, beautiful jab. She's just, she's, you know, Dekorsi's not really moving her head. Her head's very stationary, which is enabling Mahalik to kind of hit her shots every single time she throws and she's hitting hard. Look at that cut open up on the bridge of the nose. The beautiful counter there by Dekorsi. Nice. That's what I wanted to see from her. Those, you know, Mahalik is super heavy on that lead leg when she enters into the pocket to throw her strikes. Those leg kicks to disrupt her combinations are going to be there. Final moments here in this round. Linda Mahalik trying to avenge a loss to Jillian Dekorsi in an effort to move on to the semifinals. There we go, five minutes in the books between these Atomweight athletes getting familiar with one another and heck of a fight. I, I really like the uh, sort of adjustments that Mahalik made in this bout. She knew that she needed to make a statement and you know, for her, she knew that if she was able to stay at space and exchange and get her game going, uh, that she was gonna be able to really make an impression. We'll see if that impression landed with the judges. Exactly, TJ, and with Mahalik, with Mahalik, she knew that she needed to keep the pace up. She needed to keep moving forward. And that is what you needed to do in order to win this competition. And she, she showcased that here. And this was such a crucial moment for her. You know, DeCourcy with the takedown. But what do you, you know, how did the judges score that? Mahalik was straight back up, right back at it. And she threw a lot more volume. She landed a lot more. And she, I feel like, you know, while DeCourcy was very strong in her moments, we'll see how the judges kind of score such a close bout. We will see that fight recap brought to you by Work From Home. The judges, they're, you know, taking their time, figuring it out. It's very important. I think the lens in which they look at a mixed martial arts fight, it changes a lot in this tournament. It is, but you know, you said earlier, you think that they're probably gonna be forced to judge damage more, and I agree. Although we see Mahalik's face was pretty lumped up there, um, it wasn't necessarily showing during the fight. Now we see, you know, they're kind of smoothing it out, you know, and she's got a little bit of uh, bruising around her eye as well. But, um, you know, DeCourcy's out there hopping around, waiting for this decision. Mahalik's taking her time, being methodical. Um, I think they both sustained some damage, probably more damage than any of the other fighters we've seen tonight, but we'll see how the judges is going to score that. They have rendered their decision. It lies with Joe Martinez. Well, fight fans, after one round, we have a split decision. Advancing to the semi-final tonight in this Atomweight tournament from Richmond, Kentucky, Linda F109 Mahalik! Linda Mahalik able to settle the score, making a name for herself here at Invicta FC. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape, brought to you by Zebra Mats, the world's leading training facility outfitter. Paulina Granados, four years the elder of Marissa Messer of Valencia. Granados will stand two inches taller, both on point at weigh-ins. They both have a 62-inch reach. For our official introductions for this quarterfinal, here is Joe Martinez. And here we go, fight fans, our fourth quarterfinal in the Adam Weight Tournament. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. This mixed martial artist stands five feet even, weighing in officially 105 and one half pounds in four professional fights. Her record stands at three victories and one defeat. Fighting out of North Haven, Connecticut, here is Marissa Spider Monkey Balencia. And across the cage, her opponent fighting out of the red corner, standing five feet, two inches tall. She weighed in at the added weight limit, 106 pounds. Her record stands even with four victories and four defeats. Fighting out of San Diego, California, here is Paulina Firefox Granado. And your referee in charge of the action is Nick Behrens. Referee Nick Behrens getting this quarterfinal assignment here. It is Marissa Messer Balencia taking on Paulina Granados. 
TJ DeSantis, Julie Kedzie, Megan Anderson inside Memorial Hall tonight for the Phoenix Tournament. Appreciate you joining us live here on Access TV. Valencia going to work early here wow. with about a seven strike combo there. Closes the distance. Our clock here brought to you by Juju Me. Fight premature aging with Juju Me's high grade Juju Bees, the ultimate unknown superfood. Use code Invicta FC for 10% off. Renato's not able to get that takedown, but now trying to lock up the head of Valencia. Fighting here in the clinch. Renato's able to get a takedown here. See if she can secure it. And she does now setting up here inside. That really speaks to her confidence. You know, she said, I, I know that she's a, a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, uh, but I have a purple belt and I train with some very, very good grapplers. Nice adjustment here by Valencia, who's uh, in the half guard here of Granados. Valencia really came alive at the beginning of this round and <laughs> now she's coming alive on the ground here. You know, that initiative, it needs to be pushed because five minutes, not a lot of time to work. And now oh, going to work is Valencia goal. on the back here of Granados. And this is where she wants to be. This is where she can do her best work. And, you know, she's doing a beautiful job with the transition to the back, except she's need to be a little bit careful because uh, Granados is, you know, trying to kind of get her heavy over the head so she's able to kind of shuck her off a little bit and reverse position. But, you know, Balencia doing a really good job of keeping those hooks engaged and, and really just riding the back very well. And you can see she's very fast when she tries to sink in there, um, the rear naked choke. She hasn't quite gotten it in there yet, but she's looking for it. She really wants this finish. She's setting it up really well, Julie, and, and it's just showcasing her experience in the grappling. Trying to lock up this choke here is Balencia. A lot of time to work, three minutes remaining here. She's not quite under the chin, but she's putting a lot of pressure on the chin there. Which that can, that you can finish from this position. If you look at somebody like Damian Maya, he does a really good job of finishing a rear naked choke, choke without actually putting the arm underneath the chin. So it is doable, you just have to get the right angle. And I have to say, I, I admire the way Granados keeps her legs moving independently of her defense on her feet. Like, she's already back on her feet. Um, she was able to use her feet to kind of switch her position and uh, while she was still defending against that choke. Back at space, a little under uh, halfway yet to go here in this fight. And closing the distance once again is Balenciaga back in the clinch. And Valencia had an idea that she wanted to come in here and get quick finishes too. And you can see that's very much on her mind. Um, Granados, though, she fights with a lot of fire, a lot of passion. And she said she does kind of end up being a slow starter at times. And it looks like she's back on her feet. And she's ready to turn it up. These athletes just throwing punches here with two minutes left in this round. Oh, beautiful right hand there by Granados. Granados not rattled at all by being taken down and controlled. She's very much in this fight, and Valencia is as well coming forward again with more strikes. It seems as though her hands have slowed down just a bit, Valencia's, but nice um, adjustment there by grabbing the head and throwing on the inside. Oh, nice. Beautiful. Knocked down there by Valencia. Granados back to her feet for the time being, 90 seconds left. I think Valencia's strikes are just a little more crisper down the center, whereas Granada's is kind of swinging a little wide with those big hooks, and I think that's where she's getting caught a little bit. You know, she's getting caught with those straight punches down the center while she's trying to swing wide with those hooks. But she's also hitting a lot of those punches herself. And Valencia does have um, pro boxing experience. You can kind of see that the way she's setting up those shots and she's really tilting her head. Um, well, she was earlier. <laughs> it's in one spot right now. The corner of Granados urging her, Angela Hill saying, you know, throw more. Don't don't just throw one and done. And this is really showcasing that like, when we spoke with Valencia earlier on this week, she planned to go out all out for the five minutes and just worry about the next round if it came to that. She just plans to go out and give everything in that round. And that's exactly what we're seeing her doing. She's constantly walking forward. She's going for the takedown. She's throwing a lot of strikes, but Granados is not backing down. She's standing in the pocket and trading. Oof. And this is absolutely insane. Both of them just swinging for the fences. <laughs> We've got a fight. 20 seconds left in this quarterfinal here between Marissa Messer, Valencia, and Paulina Granados. 
Inside the clinch, final 10 seconds here of the round. Ooh. There you go, five minutes in the books between these atom weights. Paulina Granados was game. Marissa Messer Balencia, she knew what her game was and she employed that plan very well. She really did. She came out aggressive from the get-go, which is, you know, she claims to be an aggressive forward-moving fighter. She showcased exactly that. And I think with the takedown it, it, and, and, the re, and the reversal, I think that was crucial to her. She was able to do a little bit of damage, but look for, right from the get-go. Look at, there's, a, there's an eight to 10 punch combination <laughs> right at, within the first 10 seconds. And I think that constant forward pressure really worked to hit her advantage. You know, great takedown there by Granados, but the reversal for Valencia really, I think, sold it in particularly the grappling exchanges she was able to do a lot of damage on the ground she was able to take the back really she had control position she was looking for damage she was looking for submissions and then when it got back to the feet she while granados was really you know she came back strong she was able to showcase a lot of her own skills i think with that forward momentum from Balenci at the first half of the round she was really able to i think steal it Potentially. We will see how the judges feel about it. They are rendering their decision. That fight recap brought to you by Work From Home. Visit WFHLife.com. The only brand exclusively focused on work from home. Soft, comfortable, and fashionable. Up to 60% off at WFHLife.com. All right, Joe Martinez has our official decision for this quarterfinal matchup. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after one five-minute round, we go to the judges, and again, we have a split decision. Moving on to the semifinals tonight of the Attaway Tournament from Connecticut, Marissa Spider Monkey Balencia. Marissa Balencia getting it done tonight. Split decision pushes her through to the semifinal round. We will see her tail the tape for this reserve matchup here at Invicta FC's Phoenix Tournament. It is powered by Zebra. The Wolf Queen, Samantha Seff, is nine years the elder of Kara Vislowski. Looking at Vislowski, she stands one inch taller, both on point at weigh-ins. Vislowski will have a one inch reach advantage. For our official introductions, here's Joe Martinez. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, one round of this reserve matchup at the Adam Weight Division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, her background, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. At five feet even, she weighed officially 106 pounds and as a professional holds a record of no victories with one defeat. Fighting at a few quay, Verena, North Carolina. Here is Samantha Wolf Queen Sarah. And across the cage, her opponent fighting out of the red corner. This mixed martial artist stands five feet, one inch tall. She weighed in 104 and one half pounds and holds a record that stands even at one victory and one defeat. From Portage, Indiana, here is Kara Veslowski. And your referee in charge of the action is Marcio La Selva. Marcio La Silva getting this assignment. Newcomers, Samantha Seff taking on Kara Veslowski. TJ DeSantis, Megan Anderson, Julie Kedzie inside Kansas City's Memorial Hall here for the Phoenix Tournament. Closing the distance here early. Vislowski trying to utilize some punches here. But now we see Seth in control of this clinch. Really interesting cage awareness from, uh, uh, excuse me, Vislowski right there. But yeah, Seth is now in control trying to find that takedown. Looking at Vislowski, she is a Golden Gloves champion in Chicago. Uh, so not really surprising that the grappler here in Seth closes his distance, tries to slow the fight down and get in the clinch. Yeah, as a brown belt, she knows that that is where she's going to do her best work. And, you know, it's it, it's really showcasing Vislovsky here, being able to do a lot of, you know, defense here. But, you know, Seth doing a beautiful job of finally getting that takedown. She's doing a really good job wrapping up the legs. And this is such a good control point. I w would love to see Vislovsky. She's kind of angling her back up the cage. I want to put her back on the cage, try to disengage those legs, and look to get back up. Over the years in mixed martial arts, it used to be you would try to push your opponent uh, up against the fence on the floor to try to make ground and pound land, uh, you know, with more force. But now, over the last few years, uh, athletes try to get themselves to the fence to try to do that wall walk and get back to their feet. Yeah, exactly. And you 
as an athlete, you have to look at the cage as, as an extra limb. Use it to your advantage. And I think that's what Vislovsky needs to do here. But uh, Seth is doing a beautiful job of wrapping up the legs. She's riding high. She's not letting Vislovsky do that. But there she goes. She's doing a beautiful job. I, I wanted to get let go of that take let go of that guillotine i think that's going to do it it's going to get her taken down again mm -hmm. you know it, that was the moment that she needed to disengage switch her hips and it, get her back off the cage because this is where Saf wants to be she has three minutes left to work here as well and we talk about these you know one round fights it feels like almost every minute is a round into itself so you, you want to try to you know control that time and for Seth while she hasn't thrown a, a ton of offense here Julie she's in business she's controlling where this fight is taking place yeah she's doing a really good job of of, of getting controlling positions of making sure that she's swarming Vislovsky and keeping Vislovsky constantly on the uh, on the defense and really I mean Vislovsky's left arm is under hooking and it's around the head but it's not really attacking a choke it's not doing enough right there so i think that underhook could be doing more work or she could or she could be using that to frame and like you said use the cage to get back to her feet you see in the background there adam white champion alicia zapatella taking in this tournament her opponent or her training partner tabitha watkins was in the first round but now she's definitely an interested spectator here watching these adam weights try to secure a future date with her in the future yeah i think that you get you know she doesn't really have to worry about watching her friend now I, I don't think it's a relief necessarily but it does get her focus completely shifted on okay who's going to be fighting me you know what am i looking for let me gather some information on potential opponents now Samantha Seff on top of Kara Vislovsky. This a reserve bout in our Phoenix tournament. Vislovsky, as you can see, she's got the underhook there. She th That is putting her in a very bad position. She needs to utilize that by putting her hand on the cage, using it as a frame to get back up. She needs to switch her hips, get back up, and get to work. She's able to get back to her feet, but Seff trying to make the adjustment here with the over-under, it looks like. Again, not letting her get free at space. See, she, she's doing a good job of framing on the hips, but she's got that underhook. She needs to dig that underhook and get her body to that side to be able to disengage. Beautiful job there. See if Vislovsky can make something happen here. A little over a minute remaining in this fight, but back at space. And this is where Vislovsky really wants to be. She wants to let those hands go. Um, she was doing a nice job earlier in the round of attacking while being grabbed at, while being kind of walked down. So we know she can punch going backward, but it'd be good to see her accelerate and go forward now. Big overhand misses there by Seth. Trying to close that distance again with Seth, but Vislovsky able to get her back off the fence and, and stay at space here. I think she's timing those takedowns a little bit better now that she's aware of them. But I think that's also, you know, prohibiting her from throwing a lot. She's hesitating a little bit because she knows the takedowns are there. So it's kind of lessened her game a little bit. And I think Seth really needs to be cognizant of her reach right here. I think she's got longer arms and I think she needs to employ them and move her feet more. Final 10 seconds of this bout. The one and only round in the books here. You look at Vislovsky, th she thinks that she has done enough to claim this victory. It's, it's an interesting fight here because if this were a three round fight, I think there are a lot of good things uh, for both athletes to take away from here, but it's the whole fight and judges are gonna have to judge it as so. Exactly, TJ, and it isn't a three round fight. I think I think the game plan for Vislovsky, I don't think was the right one for a one round fight. I think she needed to do a lot more and I think the, the ground control of Samantha Seff really sold this round. You know, one thing to keep our eyes on too is how these athletes are healing in between fights because, you know, they've come to fight. So swelling might be a factor and you never know what's gonna keep someone uh, out of the bout. Let's take a look at this fight recap brought to you by Work From Home. Julie, walk us through the action. Well, you can see even though Vislovsky was throwing hands, Seff goes into a controlling position up against the cage. She gets Vislovsky down several times. Um, Vislovsky stays like wrapped with that left underhook. Once they disengage and get back on their feet, Vislovsky lets her hands go just a little bit. Steph is looking a little bit tired. Her punches are kind of dropping afterwards. So it's something to keep in mind were she to advance and take the place of one of the uh, finalists, semi-finalists. Both, both athletes feel like they have done enough. The judges will decide it. That decision lies with Joe Martinez. Well, fight fans, after one round, we go to the judges and we have a split decision. Your winner,
Out of the blue corner, Samantha Wolf Queen Seth. Samantha Seth getting.